Is the Republican Party now in the business of tracking women? And uh, it is actually, lest you be confused, a big business. There are data companies around the country that sell your information gathered off the internet. You know, when you, when you walk around with your cell phone, there are apps on your cell phone, and in some cases, the operating system itself. Um, in, you know, in the case of, uh, of the uh, Android phones, which, are, which is Google, essentially. Google is one of the largest data acquiring companies in the world, if not the single largest. Um, that literally are tracking everything you do, where you go, what you say, or not what you say, but where, you know, where you go, um, you know, uh, if you're wearing something like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or a, you know, any of these devices that can monitor your blood pressure rate or your, your heartbeat rate, rather, um, you know, they can even tell, okay, now he's asleep, now he's having sex, now he's out walking, now he's exercising, now, you know, it's, it, all of that information is literally being aggregated about all of us including where we are. And it's gotten to the point where there are companies selling information, and this, this was kind of a sting operation that was done by a news organization recently um, that then uh, led to the Federal Trade Commission going after a company called Cochava, which is denying that, they're, that they have any, uh, you know, that they're doing anything bad in this. But the FTC is alleging that they are selling data that can literally track a single woman going to, a, to a, uh, uh, an abortion clinic, from the abortion clinic to her home to identify her. And then once you've identified her, of course, you can, you can find out what, the, what she's searched on on the internet. Um, you know, if, you're, if she's using a public email service, uh, you know, what she's corresponding about it in her email, all kinds of things. And this information is now publicly available and for sale. So if you're some guy in Texas where you can make a $10,000 bounty just by identifying a woman and her friends who, who got an abortion and her friends helped her, uh, you, can, you can make $10,000 per person, per lawsuit. You know, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in Texas you can sue the woman herself, but you could, you could sue her, her mother or her spouse or her friend who drives her to the clinic or the person who takes her to the airport or whatever it may be. And so we've got a whole bounty hunter industry Going after women, Texas now has legislation pending that will raise that bounty from $10,000 to $100,000, really putting the crosshairs on women in the United States. And, uh, and multiple other states are looking at repeating Texas's bounty program, doing that same thing. And, you know, this, this is very problematic. The other part of it, though, is uh, a much bigger operation. These are absolutely huge. There's these so-called crisis pregnancy centers that advertise themselves, and they do so aggressively. They've got big bucks, these centers. They're, they're, they're literally receiving tens of millions of dollars in state tax money from Republican-controlled states, and they do aggressive fundraising. And these crisis pr pregnancy centers um, look like doctor's offices. They go out of their way to look like doctor's offices. They advertise as if they're doctor's offices. You walk in, you, you, you would swear you were in the waiting room of a doctor's office, right down to the medical magazines on the, on the, on the tabletops. And uh, typically what they offer are pregnancy tests, which you, know, you can buy at the drugstore. But you know, they say, hey, can, you know, we'll verify your pregnancy, come on in. And it's just a, you know, a, a, a regular urine test, like, literally like the ones you buy in the drugstore. And they advertise ultrasounds, about half of them in the country. There's several thousand of these in the United States. About half of them offer ultrasounds. But the ultrasounds they offer are entertainment purposes only. In other words, this is not an actual medical diagnostic tool. Um, unlike like surgery, for example, I mean, if, if you were to say to your friend, hey, come on over to my house, I've got a scalpel, I can, you know, cut you open and take out your appendix, uh, you'd, be, you'd be causing some real problems for yourself. That's regulated, right? Not, not the scalpel itself, but the use of it. On the other hand, if you were to buy an ultrasound machine, you could, you could tell everybody in your neighborhood, come on over and I'll scan your pancreas, I'll check out your liver. You know, as long as you're not making medical claims about it, it's for entertainment purposes only. And the reason that they're doing this, in addition to adding to their credibility and also you know, hoping to get an image that they can show to the woman saying, that's your baby, isn't it cute?
is that by offering ultrasounds, quote, for entertainment purposes only, they are not regulated by HIPAA, the Health Privacy Act. So when women go into these centers and they're assuming that they're in an abortion clinic or in a place that refers women out to abortion clinics, before they're even given any information, they have to fill out lengthy questionnaires that include, you know, just a whole pile of data, uh, name, address, email address, ethnicity, marital status, living arrangement, education, income source, alcohol, cigarette and drug intake, medications, medical history, sexually transmitted disease history, name of the referring person or organization, pregnancy symptoms, pregnancy history, medical testing information, and even ultrasound photos. All of that stuff, they have to fill this out before they can even talk to the person who's going to say, God doesn't want you to abort that baby. And what happens to that information? 2,700 of these crisis pregnancy centers are all tied into one giant company, and they've got this massive database that they're compiling on every single one of these women, number one. There's, there's about a half a dozen, there's a, a, a little short of a half a dozen of these large networks of these things, of these crisis pregnancy centers. So they're gathering all this information. Some of them say right in their privacy notices that that information may be shared with law enforcement. So if that woman is, uh, you know, in a state where it's illegal to get an abortion and they go to a, see, I mean, you know, it's illegal to get an abortion in Texas right now. There are still hundreds of crisis pregnancy centers operating in Texas. So women are walking in thinking that they're going to get a referral to e either they're unfamiliar with the changes in the law, many people are, or they're assuming that because it's illegal in Texas, they're going to get a referral and maybe an airplane ticket to, to you know, Illinois or something. But now that this, these centers have their information, they can turn it over to the police, they can sell it to bounty hunters. Now, there's no evidence yet so far that crisis pregnancy centers are selling this information like the data brokers are. But they explicitly, some of them explicitly say, we will share this information with law enforcement if we're asked to. So this is a massive scam snaring literally tens of thousands of women every single day, and girls, uh, every single day across the United States. And then the main use that they put to this information is they hand it off to the local church that is, or, or parish or, or whatever it's called, many of them are supported by the Catholic Church and, or Catholic organizations. They hand it off to local preachers who, and, and lay counselors who just start relentlessly calling these pregnant women, you know, in some cases multiple times a day, trying to talk them out of getting an abortion or warning them about the dire consequences. And the Supreme Court in 2018 ruled that it is perfectly legal for these crisis pregnancy centers to lie to women about the consequences of abortion and the consequences of pregnancy. So they can literally say, oh, it's much safer for you to carry this baby to term than to get an abortion, which is a lie. They can say, uh, oh, if you get an abortion, you'll never be able to get pregnant again, which is a lie. They can say, if you get an abortion, you're more likely to get breast cancer, which is a lie. These are all documented lies that have come out of these crisis pre pregnancy centers. And they, they just harass these women to no end. And the GOP is all in on this. Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, just last month, just last month, introduced legislation into the Senate along with uh, Senator Mike Lee and 17 Republicans to declare election week, the week of November 8th of this year, quote, National Pregnancy Center Week. Isn't that great? Republican attorney generals across the United States, led by Ken Paxton in Texas, Virginia's Jason Myers, and Kentucky's Daniel Cameron, these are all attorneys general, are demanding that when women search online for pregnancy information, they be directly, immediately directed to websites of local cri 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 crisis pregnancy centers. They're making this demand of Google itself. They're threatening Google. And, uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, if you do not, they wrote to Google, we must avail ourselves of all lawful and appropriate means of protecting the rights of our constituents uh, and upholding freedom of religion for all Americans. And over in the House, Republicans have introduced legislation that would allow pregnancy, crisis pregnancy centers to sue and recover a minimum of, of $20,000 from anybody who attacks them, like I'm doing right now.